All right, welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. For the second consecutive year, President of the World Anti-Doping Agency, Betul Banka, is in Jamaica for Wada's Forum for Caribbean Sports Ministers. Approximately 18 ministers of sport will be in attendance for the two-day forum set to be held on Tuesday, February 16 through to Wednesday, the 17th. In reference to the forum, Jamaica's Minister of Sport, Olivia Granger, said, We will report on the progress we have made as countries and as a region in implementing the anti-doping action plan that we discussed at last January's forum, right here in Kingston. Additionally, we will discuss a number of clean sport issues and initiatives, including athlete education, strengthening national anti-doping organizations in the region, and the critical process of updating the WADA code. Well, the occasion marks the third year that WADA will be meeting with sports ministers in the region to discuss ways of strengthening anti-doping mechanisms. The Sports Mag Zone is very pleased to welcome President of the World Anti-Doping Agency, Betold Banker. Welcome. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, so, you know, you've been in Jamaica twice already. The first thing I thought as a Trini is, you of course enjoy coming to Jamaica and these conferences are happening here often. Definitely, <laughs> I enjoy Jamaica. We are very lucky as a Jamaicans. You live in a really beautiful country. You are a great sporting nation, so it's a pleasure to be here again. Right, really happy to have you. So tomorrow, big conference again, the second one within a couple of months. What's on the agenda, President? Well, uh, this is a very important meeting. Uh, we're going to discuss the, how to strengthen the anti-doping system in the region together with the ministers responsible for, for sport from Caribbean region. This is their responsibility to take care of anti-doping policy in their respective uh, countries. We as SAWADA, we regulate the, the system, we oversee the system. And our duty is to make sure that athletes uh, compete in level playing field. So this is the goal. We're going to discuss many important things like compliance procedures, how to follow WADA rules and processes. Uh, and uh, you mentioned education. This is the key. We want to educate better athletes. We want to make sure that athletes are well informed about the procedures, how the anti-doping system uh, looks like so it's going to be uh, tomorrow in the in the in the agenda and in the discussion with the ministers yeah how impressed have you been with the first meeting and the turnout by the ministers because you know of course it's such an important education forum how impressed are you yeah we see the progress of course uh, you know the, the or there is always room for improvement and we see when we look at the caribbean region that there are some you know countries and places where the anti-doping system uh, doesn't look perfect, let me put it in that way, and that's why we, we are grateful that our friends from Jamaica um, take, took the leadership uh, as a country which has a uh, quite strong anti-doping system supported by the, uh, by the government. That's why Jamaica is hosting the, the, the event and uh, so, so um, education this, this time is a, is a, is a key topic. Uh, Last year we discussed the, the, the compliance procedures, we encouraged uh, the ministers to do more. Uh, we tried to convince them that the, you know, the strong anti-doping system is a matter of credibility, right? Yeah. If you have a good athletes, uh, if you're an athlete, uh, you, uh, you, you know, the, the athletes from Jamaica deserve to compete with the athletes from other countries in the same uh, conditions. So, so this is the responsibility of the ministers of sport to make sure that the anti-doping policy in their countries is uh, working well. How far off is the Caribbean to where you would like it to be? Well, I mean, we want more uh, more testing activities from um, uh, from the Caribbean uh, side. I mean, from the countries, we want more education actions too. That's why uh, tomorrow I'm gonna discuss with the ministers and uh, appeal to them to, to do more actually to strengthen the anti-doping system. You know, we, we really believe that sport has this power to unite people, to build something stronger. You know, sport is the best teacher for young athletes. Mm -hmm. But only sport without corruption, without doping, this pure, clean, beautiful sport. And this is the, this is the responsibility of the governments to, to build this credibility, to protect this, these values. This is actually our role as a, as a WADA. Yeah. As President, well. President, how often globally would you have an exercise like this? Well, in all continents, actually, we have uh, we have uh, meetings, we have gatherings like this, assemblies uh, uh, in Asia, in Africa, in Europe. Uh, the, 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 uh, this is one of my uh, duties as a WADA president to to collaborate with the 
uh, with the governments because the, the, our structure is unique. Fifty percent of our you know representatives uh, and contributions comes from the sports movement, and fifty percent regular contributions from the governments. While I was established in 1999, after the big doping uh, scandal, where, where there were no harmonization anti-doping system based on this unique structure, governments and the sports movement. So, so we have to collaborate with the governments. Without you know, working well with the public authorities, we are not able to achieve our mission. We are anti-doping global regulator. But, but you know, the, the anti-doping policy in, in, in the countries, this is the responsibility of the governments. So, so I mean, you know, the, the anti-doping system is very unique because uh, I always, I love to, to, to use these arguments that, you know, we harmonize, we, have, we, we un oversee almost 200 countries. We have 700, more or less, 700 code signatories. I mean, those who signed the code, yes. World Anti-Doping Code, the, the, the most important document in anti-doping. So can you imagine, you know, I know, criminal law, or administrative law, coordinated or harmonized for two or three countries, is politically is impossible. And we managed to do it in anti-doping, starting many years ago, that we, we oversee, uh, you know, almost all disciplines, all countries, and, and this is something very unique. And, uh, but of course, system requires development, changes, and from, from our side, from my perspective, I have to say that we are in a really better and good place than in the past now, yeah. currently. Yeah. Having, having said that, a few decades ago, the general feeling was that drug cheats were maybe five or six, six steps ahead of, of WADA. Um, do you think drug cheats are still ahead of WADA? And uh, if so, are they fewer steps ahead? Well, let me put it in that way. We will, it's not possible to eliminate doping from sport. You know, you will always find someone who will be able to cheat the system. Who, you know, this is like with a, with a crime in everydayness. You will not er, uh, eliminate it definitely. But when I look at our tools, which we have now, we are in a much better position. Look, the anti-doping, it's not about testing now, only testing. We have mm. uh, intelligence investigations. We work with Europol, Inter Interpol, with uh, law enforcement. We conduct investigations. Currently, only in Europe, together with law, law enforcement, we have 55 operations. Mm. Thanks to these operations, we were able to detect, you know, hidden laboratories to confiscate dozens, tons of steroids. So WADA is not only about regulating the system, but working with law enforcement. We have tools like athlete biological passport to monitor, you know, uh, behavior of other athletes, I mean, how the body exactly yeah. reacts. We have, um, the, the, we, are, we are able to retest the samples after uh, many years. We have um, compliance procedures. We have tools now even to sanction, you know, countries which are not following the, 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 the rules. For instance, you know, if you are a code signatory, I mean, uh, you have to follow the World Anti-Doping Code and our rules. If not, if your national law is not regulated, adjusted to the code, you can be non-compliant with the code as a country. What does it mean? It means that one of the consequences is that your, not fl your flag will not be, uh, you will not ex be in the, in the World a Championships, games, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you cannot be the host of, of um, a major sporting event. So those consequences are, are really strong. Yeah. So it shows our position cur currently in the uh, sporting ecosystem, how strong we are, what we can do, what we can impose when someone is not following our, our rules. Yeah, and you just referenced um, drug cheats being found out years after testing. Um, initially, there was an eight-year period, but it's now up to ten years exactly. that an athlete can can be tested positive, um, which gives WADA that span of time to you know having probably upgraded and 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 um, improved its testing that athletes can yeah. be found guilty even ten years after performing. Exactly. I, today, I had a very interesting meeting with the athletes, Jamaican athletes, and we. Uh, I have to say that I uh, received a lot of tough questions from their side. <laughs> very, very nice, fair discussion from. But and this issue is, was raised by them, you know. And I've told them, you know, guys, I was an athlete. I was running 400 meters, so I understand that sometimes this feeling that after many years, you know, uh, when you are an athlete, you want to win this medal exactly in these championships, in these Olympic games. And after many years, it's like you know. But uh, it shows where we 
where actually and where we are now with the testing that methods you know yes, now yes. we have devices more sensitive to to detect those uh, you know mm -hmm. violations which were committed yeah. by, yep. the, by, by the cheats many years ago so it's a very successful project only from the London Olympic Games we were able to to re to to uh, uh, to test positive w w more than 100 athletes after yeah. many years, yes. right? Retrospective testing is, exactly. is, is the label it's given, yeah. Yeah, um, interesting you speak about being an athlete. I do remember you competing at the 2007 World Championships um, in the 4x4 for Poland, I think running the second leg in the heats. Didn't yeah. return I for the final. Yeah, no, I, I didn't. I was not in the final because of the injury, actually. Mm. So it was a, a difficult moment for me in, in, in Osaka because I was in a really good shape. But after <laughs> after the, the qualifications, when I ran with my colleagues, I got the, the the injury. So I, of course, got the medal because yes. my, my yeah. colleagues won the, the, the bronze, but I was only in qualifications. And then next year it was another because I wanted to be the Olympian. I was in a good shape, but another injury. So yeah. And then you called it quits as an athlete after London. Yes, and you know when I look at my career, I'm, I'm happy that uh, it went not so maybe how I expected. <laughs> because thanks that I retired uh, early, I, may, I, I am where I am because uh, I was, you know, in my previous capacity, I was the minister of sport and tourism in Poland, yeah. and then I have a honor to be WADA president. And then, yeah, yeah, and uh, just 39 years old as well, you've you've achieved so much. If you had continued running then we wouldn't be having this discussion with you, probably. This is, it was exactly my argument when I spoke with my wife, when I told her that I want to finish the running. She was like, no, no, you have to continue. I said, no, no. Yeah. You have a plan. You didn't it know the plan. Decision. It was a yeah. good decision. How much does it help uh, your time as an athlete, especially identifying now with other athletes and the issues they face um, in this whole anti-doping process mm -hmm. and you speak about the conversation that you had with the Jamaican athletes earlier today um, were you able to identify more with a lot of their questions given your own experiences yeah I was I, yeah it was a very good discussion because we I received fair questions about the strict liability why we have to be so responsible why you cannot for instance certify the supplements in the world so I explained them, you know, it's not possible, you know, that we will not give the stamp of credibility to all the companies in the world which produce the supplements to just to, you know, for that you want to be more confident. You have to be responsible for, yeah. for what uh, is on your body, what you want to eat, what, you, what supplements you want to take. Uh, and of course, we discuss about the um, uh, whereabouts, the, the procedures, Adams, that athletes has to athletes have to deliver the information where they are, you know, to be able to be ready to be tested. So, so it was the, the discussion, fair discussion, how we can, you know, you know, strengthen the system, but how we can maybe facilitate uh, the, the, the processes, the system for the athletes. And again, coming back to, the, to education, I, I encourage them to, to be in contact with JATCO, with the, you know, Anti-Doping Commission from Jamaica, to receive the information, what they can do, what they can take, what they cannot. So this is this is this is the responsibility, and I've passed the message to them. You know, guys, if you want to be an international level athlete, you have, you to. have to accept the rules first of all. Sorry, yes. but this, it is what it is, and then you have to be responsible for for your body, for your career. Yeah. One aspect of the rules, the therapeutic use exemption. That over time, I. Well, definitely in this region, I personally mm -hmm. feel there is a lack of understanding mm -hmm. of how TUEs work mm -hmm. and under what circumstances an athlete can apply for a TUE and how long does it usually take to get it and so on. Yeah, I mean, this is this is exemption. This is the, the this is the process which allows you to take you know, prohibited substance if there is a real need to do it. I mean, if you are, I mean, if you have. If you are, if you got sick or it's, you have strong asthmatic, injury. Asthmatic is one of the. Um, yes, but uh, yeah, you, you you mentioned asthmatic. A lot of misunderstanding is around you know the asthmatic, the <laughs> accusations on some nation that they the the, the, the athletes from this country is taking too many TUEs or, or medicaments. But to be fair, not too many. I would say. Asthmatics, these um, um, medicines are on the on our prohibited at list at the uh, moment. Yeah, exactly. So this is not like uh, maybe it's a matter of communication. We have to communicate 
better the, 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 the whole process, how it looks like. And, but it's quite clear you have to, first of all, to ask for this uh, um, TUE or respective uh, commission agency in your country. Then it's, the, 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 it's reviewed by, by WADA, by our uh, experts. And finally, the, there, is a, if there is a real need to take this concrete substance because it's, a, it's a dangerous for your life. It's, if there is need to do it, you have a permission to, to do it. Yeah, that explains it perfectly as far as I'm concerned. But just to be absolutely clear for those who are watching and may still not understand, so let us say an athlete turns up at a championship and they get the flu, they can't no. just go, oh, well, I'm not feeling too well, no, I'm going no. to apply for a TUE. No, no. No, absolutely not. It's it's a serious thing, you know. For instance, there is a strong injury and I don't know some dangerous situation in in in, in your life, and then there is no alternative that you have to take, use this substance, this method to uh, to recover or to be to be healthy. Then you know doctors are reviewing it. So this is not like that. You you know I, Just I this great example that oh I feel bad I will take the prohibited <laughs> substance. And I said oh sorry I didn't know. <laughs> oh I want to do. I want a TV re re retrospectively. No, it doesn't look like this. <laughs> yeah, definitely does not work like that. You spoke earlier about nations that can be considered non-compliant. Is there any nation, as far as you know, in this region that is even close to being categorized as non-compliant? We have different tiers, right? So the, the, the countries most developed when it comes to sport, economy, the different factors are taken into account are in tier one. So some countries which are not so developed economically, you know, when it comes to sport and so on are in different tiers. So we have, I mean, we required less from, from, from them, right? Okay. To, to, be, to be compliant, the process is quite, but as far as I know now, it's not a, there is a, there were some countries which were closed, which were on our watch list, which were close to be uh, non-compliant. But, you know, I don't want to crucify anyone now yeah. here. I mean, until the country is non-compliant, which is actually, obviously, it's a public information. I don't want yes. to. What we are doing, first of all, this is the last tool which we use. It's not that we are happy to make someone non-compliant, yes, right? Yes. So this is actually said that, and uh, this is the last resort. It's not like... Yeah. We, we assist, we help, we push, yeah. and then if there is no alternative, we, are, we have a process in place that, that, we, we, that our CRC uh, independent committee recommends the, the, um, uh, some sanctions, let me put it in that way, and then executive committee is taking the, the final decision. Yeah. What type of work do you do with these federations specifically when you realize that they are trending down the wrong path mm -hmm. and there is the possibility they could become non-compliant yeah we have department responsible for it so as i as i mentioned we assist them we we, we monitor them we have special procedures to monitor you know uh, some forms we require documents we review their legislation how the system works and then uh, the our experts are, are telling them what to improve what to adjust what to change we are giving them you know timeline and, and then the assistance. So, so it's not like that we are telling them, oh, it's wrong and do whatever you want, but we, you have to do it before March, right? In three months, otherwise you're gonna be done compliant. No, no, we assist them, we help them, and then sometimes, uh, you know, it depends. When you look at the politicians uh, where, you know, they, they, were, they are ignoring us for, for months, and then when it comes to the sanctions, they, they wake up, you know, and this is sometimes too late. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, doesn't sound good at all. You, you want to cooperate as much as yeah. possible. Um, we're almost out of time, but I have to get this one in. Um, Vito Banker, 39 years old, a former 400-meter runner, um, is being asked to take on a retired Usain Bolt at 400 today. Who would win? Oh, my God, Bolt. It's, you know, I Are was you nothing. serious? I was, she I... would still beat you. No, you don't think you're in better shape? Absolutely, it was 50 kilos ago when I was, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when I was sprinter, so no, I think it's... It would be academy of strange moves from my side, you know. Still, I'm running from time to time, but it's a jogging, right? So uh, <laughs> I well, don't want to. <laughs> no, no. We, we gathered earlier on in your in your life, you had football as a as a yeah. big sport for you, a big AC Milan fan. Yeah. Okay. 
Not, you not are very well prepared. Not, not, not too <laughs> sure what's happening with them. No Champions League title since 2007. Yeah, but you know, I was a big fan of AC Milan when they wrote Ruth Hulid, Marco yes. Van Basten, Frank Reika, yes, you know, yes. those gen this generation actually. You have a different team now? Now, as a, as a WADA president, I cannot, uh, you know, um, <laughs> say it publicly. But, Aww. you know, I'm from Poland, so you can... You can uh, figure it out. You can figure it out that, you know, Lewandowski... Mm -hmm. I know him very well. So. The goal-scoring yeah. machine. Yeah. Well, the goals haven't been coming, but yeah. yeah. yeah I think still he will come back in a very good shape. I, yeah. I keep my fingers crossed for him. Yeah. yeah. We all do. Mm -hmm. Vitor Banka, it's been an absolute pleasure having you Thank on the Sports Channel Zone. Thank and you it's a much. pleasure having you back in Jamaica. And we wish you all the best with the forum over the next two days. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure for me. Thanks. Yeah, man. Great. Yeah. All right.